Let's, Let's make, make a, a My Plate, plate meal. meal. at the table. Sydney here and I have a special guest today, Miss Robin Palmer from Samson Regional Medical Center. And Robin, you are the wellness coordinator. I'm the community wellness coordinator, so I'm thrilled to be here to help you cook a healthy meal. Yes, so excited to have her. And Robin is one of my colleagues and very dear friends. We do a lot of programs and different things together to help promote wellness throughout the community. So I'm so excited to have her on today. And our focus today is gonna be on a one pan my plate meal. So really highlighting that my plate, um, the different aspects of my plate and all of that. So we are gonna dive right into cooking. We have a fork tenderloin and Robin's gonna go to her station. We are also have a um, roasted vegetables that we're gonna be doing as well. So we're gonna be focusing first on that pork tenderloin just cause it takes a little bit of time. Now, if you are, um, new to using a pork tenderloin. Pork tenderloin is one of the leaner cuts of pork. It's actually uh, very, very lean, as lean as chicken. So it is a very healthy choice if you're looking for a lean protein, which is part of our my plate. And we'll get to that in just a minute. And it's so easy to cook. Yes, it's super simple. It doesn't take a lot of, a lot of work to it. Um, it's very tasty all in its own. Um, we're just gonna use a few spices here. We're not gonna do a whole lot to it. So. I'll start with that pork tenderloin. Um, one thing that you wanna do is when you're looking at your pork tenderloin is make sure that you get any of the excess fat off. I'm using a fillet knife here, and this is perfect for if you have any of those fatty pieces that you want to trim um, or anything like that, you can use a fillet knife. If you don't have a fillet knife, a small knife is, is a good choice as well, um, like a paring knife or a serrated blade is also pretty easy to kind of get into whatever you're cutting very easily. And this is what they call the silver skin. And sometimes you'll see recipes that say, remove the silver skin. This is what that is. So what I do is I just, if I can get in there, take my knife and kind of try to get under the surface a little bit and just begin chopping that right off. You just want that top layer. You don't wanna necessarily be getting um, all of that good meat that's underneath it. We don't wanna skimp ourselves, right? Right, you can also use scissors and it just kind of peels off. Yeah, Perfect. so yeah. anything that's you know simple for you, whatever you have on hand, um, I just kind of go around and trim Again, this is a, a very lean cut of meat all in its own, so you don't really have to do a, a ton to it. Um, you could remove some of that excess fat to kind of reduce that, but you don't have to remove all of it if you don't want to. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, add in my spices. So I'm just gonna do a little salt and pepper. I'm gonna sanitize my seasonings after this. And I find too, your hands are all in it. If you just like pat it in, it makes it like yeah. a rub and really gets into that meat. And you could mix all of these seasonings in a little bowl together and then go back through yeah. and just press it into your meat. This is a little salt and pepper. And then I've got some onion powder. Again, kind of pressing that in. And I think truly with pork tenderloin, anything really goes. Cumin, oregano, make it spicy, make it a little sweet. Um, garlic, and I, that's part of the fun to me. Every time you cook it, just adding something a little different. Yeah, there are tons of options. I just picked my favorite seasonings, which yeah. is exactly what you should do when you're making this at home. Um, onion powder is one of my favorites. Garlic powder, if I'm not using fresh garlic, I'll use garlic powder. Um, 
And I've also found that they're really starting to grind all of the spices, salt and pepper, and it makes it seem like a gourmet kind of um, fancier meal to grind those herbs um, and then rub it into that pork tenderloin. Yeah, like um, you could buy it with the grind in the yeah. on the container. And we're baking it today, right? Yes, we are gonna bake it um, the same temp as our vegetables. Again, that we're gonna try to do this all at once, throw it all in the oven um, together. Now this will take about 20 to 25 minutes, but your vegetables will take about 15 to 20. So you would add those a little bit later. And the key truly is making it as simple and as easy as possible with that one skillet or one dish meal. Yes, so I have it well seasoned. I did parsley, garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper, and just press that in. And Sounds then delicious. I just sprayed my pan a little bit and we're just gonna lay that out on our pan and throw it into the oven. So really simple Perfect. and easy. Um, Robin, you were talking about grilling. Yes, I've just gotta share this recipe because it'll make you wanna do a pork tenderloin every weekend, but it's called 765. It's so easy to remember. You grill it seven minutes on one side, six minutes on the other side, turn your grill off for five minutes, and I promise you, you will have the most perfect grilled pork tenderloin ever. Yum, and you always wanna make sure that your pork tenderloin is at an internal temperature of 145. That is um, the temperature for pork. So once we get that done, yeah. we'll check it, but that is, if you're grilling, grilling gives it a really great flavor. Um, I kind of like grilling better than, yeah. than Crunchy baking. on the outside. Um, yeah. Yep, yeah, 765, easy to remember. So we'll, we're gonna get this in the oven. I'm gonna wash my hands and we'll see you guys back in just a second. Introducing the Star Communications app. All the tools you need in one convenient location. You can access Watch TV everywhere. Check local channel lineup. Check your Star email. View and pay your Star bill. Report troubles. Use your Star security app. Check your home voicemail. Sign up for CrowdFiber. Check your Wi-Fi speed. The list keeps going and going. Download for free from the App Store or Google Play. All right, so we have our uh, pork tenderloin in the oven. It's gonna cook for about 20 to 25 minutes. We'll check on it at about 20. That can depend on your oven as well as, as, well as the temperature. Since we're doing the veggies at 425, make it easy, do it all at the same time, but then Absolutely. you have to maybe scale back some of that time of how long you're cooking. Um, but we said today, our whole point is to talk about the my plate. And so Robin, if you'll kind of walk us through our my plate and why we follow the my plate as a, a guide for us. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the my plate and it was actually designed to replace my pyramid that we all remember as, as kids. And it was really developed to help parents learn and know what a healthy balanced meal is for their kids. And so as you can see, half your plate is fruits and vegetables. About a fourth of it is a whole grain about a fourth of it is a protein, and then you've got your dairy here. This is a perfect meal for a, a kid. Um, truth be told, we're taking it a little farther with grown-ups, and we're just one plate, half your plate, non-starchy fruits, I mean, vegetables or fruits, a fourth of it a protein, and a fourth of it a whole grain or a um, starchy vegetable. The key with either of these plates, and it's one and the same actually, is that you get a whole healthy balanced meal on that plate. Um, vegetables, uh, carbohydrate, and a protein, and then you've got your dairy. With our meal here with the um, pork tenderloin and all the vegetables, we've got our non-starchy vegetables with the broccoli, the carrots, the onions, and then we've got the sweet potato for our starchy vegetables. So that satisfies a whole healthy plate. If you're not quite sure, Use your hands. Half your plate is non-starchy vegetables. A fourth of your plate is a whole grain. Um, and a fourth of your plate is your protein. Um, every time you eat, that's what you should be thinking. How can I get more vegetables on my plate? How can I keep it veg balanced? And this meal does it really perfectly. Yeah, and so we'll start on those veggies yeah. actually, so that we can walk right, right, right into that. 
Um, and so whatever you want to cut, Robin, yeah. I'm just going to grab some stuff. You actually want to do. I'll grab it. How about I'll take the carrot and the broccoli. Okay. Truth I'll be told, if I'm at my house, anytime I'm making a meal, I grab a carrot because I'm a huge nibbler. I'm not going to do it here, but it keeps <laughs> me, it keeps something in my mouth and it's something healthy and I get one more vegetable in a day. So I've always got an extra carrot on hand. I also want to be sure that, of course, we've washed these vegetables, but keeping this skin on. Don't cut away your um, all the goodness, all those extra vitamins and protein and fiber that you're going to get in the skin. Um, and it's the same with the broccoli. One other thing I love to do with broccoli is peeling the stem and then using the stem as well. Again, use every bit of that goodness. Um, it's so, it's every bit of it is full of vitamins and minerals and fiber and all the good things that we're looking for. Sydney has some yes, great definitely. cutting techniques for her vegetables. Yeah, for the broccoli, I don't really do. Um, I just kind of work my way from the outside towards the inside yep. and slowly try to get towards that middle. Um, and as Robin yeah. said, I feel like the stem is really great for if you're roasting or um, stir frying. Um, if yeah. you don't really want the hard stem, then you could definitely still save that for stir frying. Mm -hmm. Peel or, it away, make it a little softer with the peel. Yeah, or like cut it into smaller pieces, cook it for a little bit longer, um, and also throwing it into soup, soups and stews and things like that. So there are lots of benefit to using the whole entire yeah. broccoli. And I also find as I cut um, through the broccoli, then you get each little um, stalk smaller and smaller. And it's really personal preference how big you like your stalks. The smaller it gets, of course, the less time it's gonna take to cook. So I kinda like my broccoli um, about that size. I've got the stem and I've got the, the heads. I'm gonna use this piece right here. Um, as, again, as much as I can. And then I'm going to go on to the carrot. Again, they've been washed. I am keeping the um, skin on. Sydney, what's your tip with cutting carrots? You got a... Nothing fancy yeah, with that one. Um, I usually cut off the end and then yeah. I cut it in half, just like you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then I tend to cut it the long direction as well. Yes. on how skinny you're going. And right. the skinnier you go, the quicker it'll cook. So if you're trying to reduce your cook time, um, cut it into skinnier elongated pieces if you want or if you want to um, cut it into circles you could do it that way and also Whatever. if you make your um, vegetables about the same size then they're going to cook about the same um, time that you don't have a, a raw carrot and a overdone broccoli. piece of broccoli yeah yep. yeah and so make sure there. that you're being mindful of that I will say um, carrots are a little bit more of a sturdy vegetable so they're mm -hmm. going to cook slower than broccoli will. Um, so be mindful of that as well. So just a few tips for you in terms of when you're doing a one pan meal and you want it all to cook the same and cook nice and uniform, um, you might want to be more mindful of your sizes and then the different textures that you get from the vegetables you're using. But we're going to finish these up. We'll cut to a quick break and we'll see you guys back in just a second. Experiencing slow internet? If you have a fast internet package, the problem is most likely your wireless router. With more devices using Wi-Fi, your wireless router may not be able to deliver the speed and coverage you need. We now have the leading solution to enhance your internet experience. Using small devices in a mesh network, these Wi-Fi appliances cover just about any size home so that all your devices can operate to their fullest potential. Whole home Wi-Fi from Star Communications. Get the most out of your internet connection. Hey guys, Sydney here. I wanted to talk to you guys real quick about our survey that we have for you all in honor of our 50th show. And with that survey, you get one of these awesome cookbooks if you complete it. And our cookbook has things like how to stock your pantry, how to plan meals, um, how to cook with kids, different recipes to cook with your children, and then also some exercise activities in it as well. Survey will be really quick and easy. We'll have it for you over here to link up and it'll just be a few questions. We just want your feedback. And if you send us that, then we will send you a cookbook in return. Now, if you're not good with 
a survey that is electronic, you can give us a call at our extension office and we can, can mail one of those to you as well. So I hope you fill it out, give us all your feedback, and we look forward to seeing you at our next show. All right, so we have our, um, our veggies all chopped up. We've got our onion. We just did about half an onion here. Um, we didn't do a whole thing. You can do whatever works, and I cut it into small pieces, but you could absolutely do larger slices. Often, and th this is a Vidalia sweet onion, and often I do it about the size, a big size, and uh -huh. really roast it, get, get it brown on the top, and it's delicious. So yes. again, it's whatever you prefer. Which yeah, and a lot of times I I go ahead and dice or chop up my entire onions. Because you have such good skills. Such well, good I don't know about that, skills. but yeah, I just go ahead and do the whole thing, and then I can use half of it for something, half of yeah. it for something else. So whatever you have, whatever works for you. Um, but we do have our broccoli and our carrots. We wanted to talk a little bit about our starchy versus those non-starchy vegetables. Yes, so number one, our non-starchy vegetables. That's what you're looking for on half your plate. And you'll see me use my hands. I don't wanna measure. I want to just use my hands and use half my plate. That's about half your plate. The non-starchy vegetables are often called your leafy greens, but they don't have to be green. You've got carrots, cauliflower, all the crunchy ones. Um, of bell course, pepper. the greens, bell pepper, onions, mushrooms, spinach, kale, all those good ones. Yeah. Uh, all the crunchy ones are non-starchy. That's what you're looking for on half your plate. Non-starchy vegetable. We've got it perfect in our meal today. Our carrots and our broccoli are the yeah. non-starchies. You want to separate them or do uh, them together? We'll, we'll separate, separate them a yeah. little bit. Okay. Again, this isn't, this is whatever works best for you. Um, Keeping it simple, that is yes. the key. We because do. Because if it's not simple and fun and easy, then nobody's gonna do it. They're gonna yeah. swing through a drop through. Or Robin something. and I love food, homemade food, but I don't think either of us likes to spend the whole day in the kitchen. Exactly. So that's kind of what we want to avoid here. Um, so I'm gonna start working on our sweet potato. I'll give Robin half of this, and that was actually yeah, a whole lot. Yeah, and do not be afraid of a potato. They are so good for you. White potatoes, sweet potatoes, they are full of fiber, um, okay. as well as your whole grains, which include brown rice, um, uh, whole grain bread, your grains. Um, but back to the potato, don't be afraid. It's your starchy vegetable on your plate. You want about a fistful of a potato, and that is going to be about a fourth of your plate. And you wonder what size plate you should look for. You know, most of our plates now are really big, but those white old fashioned paper plates are the size plate you're looking for. So on a fourth of that plate, you want a starchy vegetable such as a white potato or a sweet potato or a starchy vegetable like corn or butter beans or peas. Um, what else, Sydney? Um, um, you a lot chickpeas. Of Any of your beans are gonna fall into that more starchy vegetable category, but they also serve as our um, protein as well. So they kind of fit into a couple categories oh, on, our, on our plate. For me, beans, you get, it's like double dipping. You get so much goodness in beans because they count as a carbohydrate, starchy vegetable, and they also count as a fiber. So you get the best of both. Also want to do a little um, interesting snippet about the blue zones. I don't know if you're familiar with the blue zones in our world, but they're concentrated areas where the people there live to be over 100 years old. And it's just a fascinating phenomenon. And of course, we all want to know how to live to be a healthy 100 year old, well, the secret is eating beans. They eat beans every single meal. Um, look it up, the blue zones. There's one in Italy, there's one in California. Um, of course, with those beans, they also eat a lot of vegetables, plant-based, lot, drink lots of water. And, and I think they walk a lifestyle. lot. They're moving yeah. much more than what we tend to do um, here yeah. in the U.S. So. There's an example of, eating, of living a healthy lifestyle. Yes, there's several do. components that really make up um, a healthy lifestyle. And beans are definitely a part of that, but so are our vegetables, so our other vegetables, so are, so is moving more. Um, and just really drink, drinking that water, yeah. making healthy choices, things like that. It's so. all about the balance. And truly when we're talking about a healthier lifestyle, 
and at the top of the list is that that plate with half your plate, um, non-starchy vegetable, a fourth starchy vegetable or a carbohydrate and a fourth of a protein. We wanna move more. We wanna, of course, eat those fruits and vegetables. We wanna drink more water. We wanna right size our portion, which we're showing you today with the plate. And we wanna cook and eat more at home, which is exactly what we're doing here today. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I've got, and, and we cut the skin on again. Yes, yeah, we Wash get lots of skin. fiber with that, with that skin. So you want to make sure that you are keeping the skin on. Um, it does help yeah. to give you, but now I will say if hands. you, yes, if you don't like, um, if you really just don't like the skin and that's gonna keep you from eating this food, then that by all means, remove it, that's okay. The goal is to get this stuff into your diet and get you to eat these types of things. That's exactly right. Whatever it takes for you to eat some carrots, if you need a little ranch dressing, or if you wanna ditch the onion, or you wanna peel it, by all means, um, do those little things that make it possible for you to enjoy those vegetables. Absolutely. Yep. So this looks really good. Um, we are gonna pop this into the oven. I put a little bit of olive oil on it and we just wanna move that around. I'm actually not, you Any can put spices? salt and pepper if you want to. Um, actually, I'll hand those to you, Robin, if you wanna. I'll tell you another one of my favorite things with the sweet potato is again, the cumin, the oregano, some herbs. It's that time of the year you got some in your garden and I know Sydney, you've got a, um, do you have a show about herbs? Yes, we did a, a couple shows back. We talked about herbs a yeah, little bit. So, so review that because you can use them everywhere. Yes. So we'll throw these into the oven. We'll see you guys back in just a minute when we get these all pulled out of the oven. Okay. After completing my contract, I still have to buy out of it. Come on, here's your sign. Switch to the sign that's keeping homes secure and customers happy all over the area. Security from Star Communications. We pride ourselves on fair pricing and quick, friendly service every time. Somebody try to break into this place? Security from Star Communications. And just like that, our meal is all done. So we have pulled it out of the oven. It looks good, it smells good. It's delicious. Um, you can actually see our veggies, just how beautiful they look. Um, you want to make sure that they are tender so you can easily insert that fork into the sweet potato and into the um, carrots here. Your broccoli, you want it to kind of get that char. Now, I will mention that when you have it all kind of cluttered like this on your pan, it begins to steam more than roast. And so roasting is what gives us that crispy crunch that we love. Um, so just be mindful of that. It's okay if you don't, if you just want to throw it all together and not worry about it. One less thing to have to keep it all separate and have a bunch of pans, right? This is true, but if you will spread it out so nothing's touching when you cook it, you get just what Sydney's talking about. That and good the crunch roasting. is what crunch. we I love that crunch love. too. So yes. um, you can see kind of our carrots and our sweet potato didn't get quite as much of the crunch, but that's okay. It'll still be delicious, I'm sure. Um, so we'll push this out of the way just a little bit and we'll start to build that plate. Yeah, and for me, the beauty is every time you do it, it's a little different and that makes for variety. So um, let's see, we're gonna start with our um, non-starchy vegetables, which is the carrots and the broccoli. You can mix them together, you can keep them separate, however you wanna do it. And don't be afraid to load those vegetables on. Again, you saw me earlier using my hands. You know, that, that's what you're looking for every time you eat. And I often like to say it's eating smarter, not necessarily eating less. So you can load your plate with the vegetables. So we've got half the plate with non-starchy vegetables, and then we're going with the potato. The sweet potato is gonna be a fourth of our plate. And if you're wondering you know, your, how big your plate is and you're not quite sure, or you're out at a restaurant, put your fist up. That's how much starchy vegetable or whole grain you're looking for, about the size of your fist. And then we've got our pork. I'm gonna just set it in here yep. so I can see it all beautiful. Um, yep, our pork, which oh, that looks delicious. It was well over. It was like 153 and climbing. So depends on how done you like it. I still think it's pretty good. You let it get too um, 
too overdone, pork can kind of get dried out really quickly. Yeah. So it is one that to me, it is best when it's got a hint of pink, not complete pink, but a hint of pink. And that's perfect. Your thermometer registers that 145. Make sure you're checking with your thermometer is the key there. It's easy to get a big old slab of meat. This looks like a perfect serving size. Again, you're looking for, for what will fit in the palm of your hand about the size of a deck of cards. Yes. And um, it's all about making that healthy, balanced plate. Half of it non-starchy vegetables, check. Half of it a starchy vegetable or whole grain. We've got the starch, starchy vegetable today, and then the fourth of it a protein, all in one, one pan, too. Yes, very um, simple. And we did use olive oil, so um, there is room for fats on your plate as well, but it's a very small portion, and I actually think this plate has um, this tiny little circle in the middle that says fats and oils, which is about what we used yeah. for the whole plate, you know, for one plate. It's about the size of the tip of your thumb, if you're wondering. If you want to add a little cheese, a little dairy, a little fat, sprinkle some Parmesan cheese over your potato or over your vegetables. Again, you're finding ways, we're finding ways to make the vegetables work for us. Um, we can't suggest the gravies or the big casseroles. <laughs> Um, there's nothing wrong with them on occasion, but for the most part, keep your plates clean and simple and load the vegetables up with th their own goodness. You know, some herbs, some spices. I'm a spicy girl. I love the spices and I love to, to mix them up. Um, you get different flavors with different yeah. spices and all of that too. Um, I, and with roasting too, I feel like it gives it its own flavor. That oh my gosh. Sometimes yeah. you don't even you don't need, need much. You really don't. Um, and I'll tell you, I love to, if you keep this plate in mind, you've got your protein, you could switch this out for a lean hamburger patty, a chicken breast, a little piece of fish. Um, a serving of black beans, um, a, bowl, a couple of boiled eggs or scrambled eggs. Yeah. You could make white potatoes. Do not be afraid of those potatoes, both of them. They're full of goodness. They're full of fiber. Um, or brown rice or butter beans. Um, and then your vegetables, you know, big tall green salad, um, some cauliflower and red peppers, whatever whatever you're feeling, whatever you've got in your garden, um, whatever's in season, switch it up and use those. Yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, and we did, you mentioned the casseroles and while we don't want a really heavy fatty casserole, there are tons of healthy recipes out there. So being mindful of that too, getting the vegetables into things like that yeah. and upping the vegetable content in some of those casserole recipes while also reducing a lot of the fats and yeah. cheeses and things that are commonly the main part of a casserole. Yeah, and you're exactly mm -hmm. right. Listen, I'm, I love me a casserole. And really one of my favorites now is one egg, a half cup of milk, and a little grated Parmesan cheese tossed with onions and squash and tomatoes and whatever else you want to add to it. And it's so light. It's so delicious. Again, you're looking for ways to incorporate the vegetables, yes. whether it's in a casserole, a uh, roasted pan of grilled vegetables, um, however you can get them, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, the veggies are key and that is what will make us grow healthy and strong and keep growing healthy and strong because we need this in all stages of our life, not just when we're, we're young no, either. No, and, and there's no magic um, recipe diet plan for diabetics or heart healthy people or obese people or kids, we all want this same healthy balanced plate. I really beg you, if you were the cook in your family, cook one meal for everyone, everyone. in your family because this is exactly what we need, that healthy balanced plate. So I hope y'all enjoyed today. We will see you guys back next time. Um, Robin will be joining us again right. and we look forward to seeing you guys soon. <laughs>